What's up, Junkie Nation? Gorgeous George and Goes checking in. Midweek, we get to talk to one of the champions of a major belt out there. In this case, it's the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship Flyway title. This is Christine Ferreira. She is the misfit. She's the defending champ, and she defends her title uh, this weekend out in Salt Lake City at the Maverick Center. You can watch the fights streaming on the Bare Knuckle FC app. Her opponent is Jade Masson Wong. How you doing, champ? Good to have you on the show. I'm doing great. Ready to fight. <laughs> You're on your way, right? You're driving. You you prefer the road yeah. trip versus the one hour flight? Yep. I, yeah, I don't. I'm, I like to bring my cat and have my car. And I'm just, I'm a driving type. Okay. Is the yeah. cat a comfort <laughs> animal or you just bring your cat everywhere? I love my cat. Like I, when I, and I take off for um my camps, I bring my cat. It's just my buddy. I've had her a long time, so. Mm -hmm. Years ago, like 15 years ago, we interviewed a guy named Matt Wyman. He fought in the UFC. Remember that name at all or no? Uh, Matt Wyman? No. Okay. Well, he was, you know, he was kind of popular back then. And I think he had two cats and a dog or something. And it's funny because he would order the pay-per-view. And we asked him, why do you do that? You're in it, you know? He goes, oh, that way my cat can, my cats and my dogs can watch it. <laughs> And that always stayed That's with you. I remember funny. one of the cats, wasn't it Batman goes? Was one of the cats, I think. Yeah. And they would yeah. just watch the pay-per-view oh, from home. Yeah. So just know <laughs> if you ever want to leave your cat, I don't know what your cat's name is at home, just so buy the we... pay-per-view or just put stream the <laughs> okay. app and they can watch it fight that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So listen, are you would you consider this uh, and I know Mike Perry came along after you, but are you almost the, the opposite side, the female side, the Mike Perry of BKFC. I think a lot of people just don't know how much of a badass you are. You've won the titles. He hasn't, right? But he did bring over a lot of popularity from MMA. But yeah. you, you seem to be this gem. I was out in Temecula, California, and a lot of people love seeing you there. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I've been in the game a long time. I started Muay Thai, um, then I'm into MMA, and then went into bare knuckle. I know a lot of people, and I like to interact with my fans, and I spend time with the fans. It's They're the reason why I'm able to compete and put on a show and entertain. So that's where I like to give back a lot. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, I, I mean, I, I was here before Mike Perry, so I don't know. Um, he, he bring, I love what he brings to bare uh, BKFC, what he brought to BKFC and the attention and everything he's done for BKFC in terms of, uh, bringing eyes and he's a tough motherfucker. And I mean, there's, if, if, even if someone's better than him in that ring, you're not going to out tough him. You're not going to out strength him. So, um, I do, I do think I have some kind of the same traits as well. If, even if someone is better than me in terms of skill, it doesn't matter because I'm going to crack you and I'm going to be able to take way more damage than you. Mm -hmm. What do you attribute that to, you know, being able to take more damage? Is it, just, is it just simply your defense or are you just tough? I, I'm just tough. I've overcome a lot. All humans, we all have overcome a lot, but I do I don't know. I, I I put myself in some really stupid positions, had to pull myself out of them. So I just think the resilience from that and changing my life from a, a bad past and all that, I just have a lot of resilience instilled within me that plays out in the ring. Because what you are inside the ring, you are outside the ring. You know, um, you can't hide. It's like when you're in a fight, you're just exposed. You're basically naked. If you're a coward, it's going to show you're a coward. If you're strong, you're going to be uh, strong within. You're, it's going to it's going to shine. Everything's going to shine very bright um, on fight night. And um, uh, everything I've been through, all the the tribulations, all the successes, everything I'm grateful for because they built me to be a psychopath champion <laughs> that can overcome so much. And I just use it for. Um, good and for success and to benefit me in fighting and uh i can't be I, i'm not i'm grateful for everything i've been through and I, I wouldn't change any of it i'm laughing with you not at you but yeah, when you said <laughs> such a path, i got pumped up i was like yeah i'm ready for this yeah. weekend because you do oh, get yeah. down inside yes. that circle there at bkfc mm -hmm. now were you ever a coward in your life and if so was there ever a moment when you said fuck it and just punch someone in the nose to get over it or or did it take you getting beat up to get over it like did you ever have that moment or were you just tough from the minute you were wearing yeah, diapers 
you know, no, I think that, you know, I, I had a, a, a I didn't like to fight. Um, did I have a, like an aggressive tomboy side? I always has, have always had this since I've been very young. Um, but I, when I, I got in trouble in school that I ended up going to a continuation school and it was like right behind juvenile hall. And I had not been locked up at that point yet. So like I was like all the girls and all the kids that were locked up. So I was like kind of intimidated. So like, I would just kind of like stay to myself and, you know, it sucked. I had to fight a few times, but it's not like I wanted to, but once I fought, I was crazy. So like, even I didn't lose any street fights, but inside me, I still had fear and I didn't like that. I didn't like that. I had like, I would stay quiet. You know, um, I'm like the quiet type. I know it seems like I'm super loud and I'm just would be out bullying people, but that's not the type I am. I'm like, I'm a uh, reserved type. And, um, I didn't like that feeling of like everybody around me being like <clears throat> bullyish and I didn't say anything. But when I got to the point, I would get to a certain point and then I would just snap. <laughs> and I'm one of those, like, you know, you mess with, you keep poking that person and then they snap and you're like, what the hell did she have in her? Or he have in him. That's the type I am. So I didn't like that. I didn't like that. I didn't have like outwards confidence. You know what I mean? And so when I started fighting, you know, I went in there and got my ass kicked. Of course, thought I was a badass. And then, you know, um, I learned to face people that were stronger than me, faster than me and try to make myself better you know, to, to be able to match that and be able to defend myself. Christine, we interview a lot of people that get into BKFC, but they come from the MMA world a lot of times or from the yeah. boxing world. And they all kind of say something similar. I'm going to go over there and get a couple fights under my belt. But what I think people like yourself, like Luis Palomino have shown, there is the yeah. possibility of some longevity in the sport. I think a lot yes. of people think I'm going to go in there and do a couple, but I can't do any more than that. You've done this quite a few times. Lisa's has done this quite a few times. There's more of you now that have more fights under your belt. What do you think the secret is to that success? What's the formula to be able to do something like that? You got to be smart in this, in, in bare knuckle. You, like my very first fight, I learned very quickly. You know, I, if you look at my past fights, I go in and I just bang, right? So the first fight, when I got prepared for it, I didn't, I didn't think of it think of it as bare knuckle i just thought okay i'm getting ready for a fight get in my best condition so i don't get tired and i could take damage and give damage so when i went in there you know i was fighting as a girl from um, nick and nate's uh diaz's camp jennifer tate and uh went in there was banging she was southpaw she caught me with a right hook and took my vision and then she took my vision in one eye and then blurring the other one. So it's the first time that ever happened to me in a fight. And that's where I knew it was different. So after, you know, when I got my vision back and stuff, I knocked her out. But after that fight, I knew that defense was incredibly important. Like you can't just take shots here. And then I learned, you know, you can get hit. I, I'm not, I don't usually get cut, but with bare knuckle, it's a little different. So cuts can happen. That's a, a fight can stop that way, or you can get knocked out. Um, so I, I just feel, I feel defense and I got, I stayed in boxing gyms, boxing. I feel like shows more defense has more slick, more, uh, I learned a lot more about the science of fighting, um, counters, catching counters, moving my head, footwork, uh, defense. I studied a lot of Mayweather, a lot of Mayweather after that fight. I mean, tons. And I, I like Sugar Ray, Sugar Ray for the speed. So a lot of speed. So you just got to find a way to, oh yeah. And also, uh, you know, not full power. Like you can't just go in there and hit and with every shot. Your hands are going to be this big by the time you're done. You've got to learn to pick your shots, have the control uh, to pepper, have power, pepper, have power, and know when to go ham because you may have hands this big for rounds three, four, and five if you're not smart. So it's experience. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to teach that you know, especially when I start teaching, you know, um, bare knuckle fighters, um, my experience of what I learned and some fighters will listen, some will, will not. And they'll learn on their own. They'll find their own ways. I love that you brought up teaching bare knuckle because so George and I have been doing our show since 
this, we're going on 18 years here. So we've gone through that period of when people were saying, this is not a sport. What are you guys covering? Right. And little by little, it's gone through its progressions, right? I feel like BKFC has done the same thing where in the beginning people were like, whoa, this is too much. Yeah. And now it's starting to catch on and it's starting to kind of gain that momentum as well. Um, you have been a big part of that. So I did want to ask you, how how big do you think this is all going to get? How much of the ride will you be there for? And then past yeah. that, what do you feel your contributions will be? Because in a way, those fighters that I've mentioned in the past, along with yourself, you mm -hmm. guys kind of have almost like that hoist Gracie role that he had for right. the UFC. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be here forever. BKFC. I love BKFC. There's a lot of promotions and, and people that didn't give me, give me uh, love or give me an opportunity to show how great I was and how committed I was. Um, I'll forever be loyal to this brand. I'll forever be loyal to bare knuckle. Um, and, and growing this company. Uh, Conor McGregor's with us now. So, I mean, the sky is the limit. Um, Conor McGregor's a very smart businessman. So, I mean, he's interested. People, now he's bringing in his fan base. Um, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm here for the long haul, and I'm here wherever they need me. I'm here on the back end if they need, whatever they need. I, I'm supporting 100% right now and even when i retire this is all i know combat sports is all i know so i want to give back to the community i want to help the kids i want to help troubled kids to know that you know they, they could change their life or even adults even adults it doesn't matter you know grown adults with a troubled past can overcome that's what i want to use my platform for and use boxing and bare knuckle boxing or martial arts whatever you want to call it to instill discipline and health and nutrition because that's what cures everything it's nutrition and, and exercise and, and it makes the world a better place going into a gym you get so much respect so um and you learn respect real quick or you're going to get your ass whooped so it's it's i love this to the core to my core to my soul this is not just for money for me this is this saved my life it took me out of the I have no idea where I would have been or what kind of person I would have been and the people I've met and how many, how many people have helped me and, you know, the sponsors and companies and David Feldman and all these guys that, you know, great men, Conor McGregor. I mean, that he's helping me grow my brand. So it's like, I'm around great men, doctors. I have Raja. I have so many guys in my corner, so many brilliant men and intelligent successful people that i i'm gonna give back everything to the next generation or you know even people my age whatever to 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 show gratefulness to the universe to for the universe gave me you know so i'm here i'm here to make this grow do i it's going it's huge already it's already huge it's it's the biggest sport combat sport in the world i'm already manifesting this this is already this is this thing is I feel it in, within me like how I feel about myself and who I knew I was I saw how I feel about bare knuckle nobody seen it at the time but I already knew what I was and who I was and what I was gonna be I just didn't know it was gonna be for bare knuckle and I know bare knuckle is the same thing and um I, I can't I'm, I'm blessed to be able to watch this grow and be a part of it well here's what I find amazing too is so not only have you helped this sport grow now and then even when you're done fighting as you said but i had heard that even you volunteered to donate your your brain to science even when you're not around so you're still going to be even helping uh combat Absolutely. sports athletes can you maybe talk a little bit about how you came to that decision and 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 what you were told how this will benefit people well you know i go to the cleveland clinic they have um they do the brain studies for for fighters and they've been doing it for a long time maybe 15 years maybe a little bit longer i don't know exactly how long i've been a part of it for about seven or eight maybe 10 years i, I seven to ten years i don't know exactly um but they I, I i got involved because at first you know i was a youngster younger and they're like hey this they give you 200 bucks or a hundred dollars to go do this study. You want to do it? I was like, sure. Yeah, I need the money. So I went in and then when I found out what it was about and I was like, Oh my gosh, it's, you know, they do an MRI scan, you know, those are super expensive and 
they tell me my cognitive, it, like where it's at, if I have the damage, what the what is being damaged year after year. So I do it yearly. And actually, since bare knuckle, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, um, my cognitive and everything has gotten better. I don't know. Maybe I'm not because I'm not taking as much hits and I've got defense better. Um, but yeah, I, I want to also give my brain. I know CTE and all that, you cannot really know until they're until you're you've passed away and they can open up your brain take your brain out and, and dissect it so for females we're not so you know we haven't been here very long so there's not a lot of research you know so i i'm been doing this 20 years now and um i'm the perfect candidate <laughs> to see you know what kind of damage can be done to the female at, over periods of time of competition and um, hopefully it'll help the future and the girls and, and the men will know, you know, what, when to stop, when, you know, when, what it can do to you, what it, over time. Um, yeah, but if anybody needs any information about, you know, they, they, they're having problems, they think their brain's messed up, just contact me. I can, uh, I'll connect you with Cleveland Clinic and um, they actually pay you to do it and they'll actually fly you in and house you as well oh really oh so yeah. it's like a series of days that you have to be there to do it it's not just like a couple hours you know yeah it's like about a four or five hour thing you know mm. you do mm. the mri the MRI, the first mri is like two hours you lay in that thing it sucks but you better just practice your meditation because it's worth it you know and yeah. then you do a bunch of cognitive and balance things for them so they see where you're at you know uh cognitively and and balance and you know, they blindfold you or you close your eyes and you have to balance on one foot and do do a whole bunch of different stuff, dude. Do you feel like you've had any traumatic brain injuries at all? I mean, aside from concussions? Um, because you know what I, Ronda Rousey said recently? She seemed to kind of like feel like she knew she had them but kept competing. How about you? We haven't really had the opportunity uh, to talk to a lot of high-level female athletes and, yeah. and broach this topic. I, I know I've had some concussions. I know that. Um, do I feel like there's some damage? I think, you know, there, there's probably some damage. <laughs> do uh, Severe damage? I don't think so. I mean, you have to ask people around me. I mean, you know, um, as for me, I feel like I can function. I still know what I'm doing. I have, you know, I feel like I've gotten better as I'm getting older, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and patience and understanding of life and understanding of business. So it's calmed me down a lot. Um, but I don't, I don't have any like noticeable, like brain trauma to my knowledge where that I see if people around me see that's different, but to my knowledge, no. Yeah. And I'm getting cognitively better, which is weird, you know, um, through Cleveland clinic. And it's like, they have year after year and they're like, actually you're a little bit better than, this time and i was like okay well that means i'm not declining yet so i'm still good <laughs> that's great to hear thanks for being open about it you know yeah. uh, the nfl they've had their problems nhl uh there's movies out about this i don't know if you ever saw concussion i think will smith was been. the star of it um yeah. and the I, I remember it referenced some nfl players from the 70s who for example just like you they'd be in the car and they would just feel like hear voices and almost like a PTSD, like they're at war. That's how that's how the movie starts. They're they're talking about, I think it's Mike Webster, a center for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And this yeah. is a guy that was all pro, you know, and you're like, oh man, that's the man. He, he must he's one of the best pros of all time. He's got Super Bowl rings, but you know, a few years later, he's suffering like that, you know. And then a guy yeah. that goes and I both like Junior Seau, same thing. This guy used to host parties at the Rio, he had a television show. And then one day, you know, he took his own life. I mean, this thing is really, really serious. And yeah. finally, I just want to say that CTE, it can only be diagnosed after you pass away. But I think in right. our lifetimes, Christine, it's going to change. They've made some adva Probably. advancements. And it, it sounds like they'll be able to diagnose it prior to so we can learn more about it. So it, uh, in summary, thank you for participating and stuff like yeah. that, being open Absolutely. about it. Uh, a lot of people look up to you, you know, and a lot of females are going to look, look up to you because you're a world champion and and so i yes. think it's outstanding absolutely and that's what i want to be i just want to be a champion you know that 
uses their platform for the good, give back what I can. The game has given me a lot and helped set me free from a lot of demons. So that's all I can do is, is give back as much as I can, you know? Yeah. Well, you got about a six hour trip ahead of you. I think, I think you're, yeah. in, are you still in Vegas? Yes, I'm still in Vegas. All right. Yeah. So you <laughs> got to get going. You fight out at the Maverick center this weekend. It's your what? Fourth title defense. If I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, the fourth title defense. Yeah. And folks, you can watch the fight on the bare knuckle FC app. Her opponent will be Jade Masson Wong. This is the main event of the fight card that's coming up here. Uh, BKFC 65, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And it's Friday. So check it out. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Christine. Thank it you. was really nice to meet you, to have you on the show. Nice and just topic, talking about all these different topics. And I can't wait for the fight. It's going to be a great one. Yours are always Thank you, guys. Classic. All right. Take care. We'll see you. All right.